Welcome back. This is Daniel Parsons, and this is a message for Daniel Parsons Ministry. And I am not a paid uh, pastor or um, member of any religious organization that pays me. I am, am a baptized um, um, Bible-believing Christian. Let's, let's leave it there. And um, today is Saturday, the 2nd of March, 2024. And I want to call this message today, I Quit. And before I begin, let me pray. And we'll get started. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of life today, Lord. I didn't want to um, do this message today, but you nudged me yesterday about a topic. And it's been a few weeks since I've done a message. And I know there are many people out there that are not active members of any uh, church or fellowship anymore. And they're getting their um, Christianity through social media. And Lord, we know that the time is short and that we need to spread the good news gospel that you died for every human being on the face of the earth that has been born and that will be born and that you took their sin burden on that cruel Roman cross and that anyone that believes in you and believe that you died for their sin and they recognize their need for a savior, that's the first step, and then they accept you into their heart, then they can have eternal life and be born again through you. And it is um, just a plain and simple message, but it's real. It's the good news gospel. And Lord, I pray that hearts will be open and minds will be open as I share this short message today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, one thing I want to bring up real quick. Um, I've been reading the Holy Bible a little bit every day from the Old Testament and a little bit every day from the New Testament and the Psalms sprinkled out through the year. The plan I do, you can actually go to uh, uh, the Bible app um, and it's called the Life Journal Bible Reading Plan. So you go through the Old Testament once in a year, the Psalms once in a year, but the New Testament, you cover it twice in the year. And I really enjoy that. And I've been doing that for around nine years, I believe, but I started reading my Bible year through the Bible back in 2004. So this is my 20th year now. And so I'm still doing it. I start my day. I, I start with prayer. God, please um, send your Holy Spirit. Uh, help me not think about self all day today and help me think about others and how I can serve you. And, um, one of the things is uh, I need to also share the gospel. And so uh, Matthew 28 teaches us that. It says, now you go and you teach and preach and baptize and um, teach others to be disciples and followers of Christ. And so witnessing is very important. It's, it's interesting. And my wife is from Chile. And she actually gave her testimony at a church down there in just Chile today. And so I, I just got off the phone with her. I'm, I'm grateful for technology. So uh, let me go ahead and, and get into my message. You can find really good um, apps on your phone or computer or, you know, get you a paper Bible. You can go to, uh, in, in the USA, we have secondhand stores and you can get very good copies of bibles for a dollar or two so anyway or you can get the apps on your phones and so um the message that i want to share um i quit um th there's a couple of things that are that were important and actually our uh pastor at the church i attend is journey Seventh-day Adventist Christian Church in Kelso, Washington. 
they have a YouTube channel. If you want to hear the message today, the 2nd of March, it's by Zach Parks. He's a younger man. And he uh, talked about in Romans and about how do not conform to this world. And it's a battle for our mind. And so uh, Zach was talking about the world is it, we're also plugged into these devices. And so I've got a device. I've got several computers. I've got to have them because I have a business. However, I quit my addiction. I titled this message, I quit. And, the, and what I want to share with you is there are some principles that you can apply and then you can take your life back and you can not be conformed to this world. And so like Paul is writing in Romans. Okay, so I might as well go there. Romans 12, verse 2. And um, I might as well share that scripture. But another scripture, if you're not familiar with the Bible, uh, read the book of Romans. But I, if you've never, ever read any scripture, I would suggest you start off reading the book of 1 John. It's in the back of the Bible, just before the Revelation. The reason is 1 John, you can cover around 10 minutes. If you're a slow reader, maybe 12 minutes. And that has so much power, truth, and love in it that it'll whet your appetite to start reading the Bible every day. Then maybe you would want to go and read the book of Romans because the Romans has much meat of how to be a Christian. And so Romans 12, verse 2. Uh, I might as well read verse 1 also. Living sacrifices to God is the title. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so I know that this message, I need this message myself. I've been married almost five years, and my wife, uh, I don't mind uh, acknowledging some of my downfalls and my character defects. My wife, when she first married me, she was angry because I was spending way too much time uh, trying to make us a living on the computer. And she was kind of jealous of my spending that much time. Well, her telling me about this and the messages that I've been hearing and, and the prayer and the, the Holy Spirit convicting me that I need to make some big changes and I've done it. I'm much happier. I have set office hours. And once my office hours are finished, if somebody calls me, uh, or if somebody uh, writes me on one of those messaging things, I just w let it wait till tomorrow because my mind needs a break. We were not designed, and in, in Pastor Zach's message, and you can get that message on YouTube, and um, it, it said that there was a study, and people check their phones 144 times a day my word and i probably am guilty um and so today i i was uh, really blessed i only used my phone i was invited to my sabbath school teacher's home he and his wife and another member of our class uh and we came to his home for dinner and then we sat around and talked for two hours and the only time I used my phone was so I could patch my wife in and into a phone call and video call. And then we could all, you know, talk to her and tell her that we love her and miss her. She's an elder 
with the Spanish group uh, of Journey. Journey is a wonderful church if you're in Southwest Washington, and it's very welcoming to people that speak any language. Uh, it's a big church, and uh, so we're working on making disciples for Christ there. So, um, so let me get back to this part about I quit. Why is it so important? Well, the word busy, I heard earlier this year or late last year, late last year, I believe it was. It stands for buried under Satan's yoke. And so there is an enemy. I need to always, when I'm giving my message, consider the person that has never heard the gospel. Consider somebody that has never understood that the reason there's so much sin and problems and wars and bloodshed and horrible things happening is because there was a perfect angel that God created named Lucifer. And Lucifer had pride enter into his mind. And instead of being the covering cherub in an exalted position, Lucifer, I wanted to be like God. And so war broke out in heaven between Lucifer and Christ. And so Lucifer fell and was cast to this earth. And he's known as Satan or the devil now. And one third of the angels of heaven were cast to the earth with him. So there are evil forces and evil spirits out there. This book, when you read about the ministry of Christ, he pulled demons out of people. And my friends, I've been in recovery for over 30 years now. And I was 22 years into recovery. And I still have some delusions in my mind. And I don't know if it was a demon or if it was a mental illness, but one morning and right after one of my birthdays, I was 22 years in recovery from substance abuses. I cried out to God, I'm miserable. And I got zapped. I started shaking and the Holy Spirit convicted me to make a change. And he ripped my delusion right out of me. And that was probably an, an example of Christ pulling a demon out of somebody. And so I've never had that problem again in my life. And I just praise the Lord for that. And my, my, I've been in mental health because it's important to use the people that God has put on the earth with talent to help people. I had my very first trauma when I was a child, and I never, never dealt with it. And uh, then I had one when I was in the Air Force in Germany. And so um, I, I highly recommend using mental health therapy if you need it. So I want to go ahead and get towards wrapping this up. The thing about I quit, why is it so important? I want to have a normal life again. I was born in 59, so I remember, you know, pl playing outside. I still walk every day. Um, I love getting outdoors in, in, the, in the fresh air, sunshine. I live in the Pacific Northwest, and even though it's the 2nd of March, I mean, it snowed today here, but it didn't stick. But it's cold. It's it's wet. <laughs> and I've, thankfully, I've got a machine that I'll be able to give myself some movement uh, indoors in, in the heat here. But um, anyway, you know, the life that we had before all of the technology, it's wonderful. I have to have it because uh, I still travel. And, you know, you need to have like documents on here in case you ever lose your passport or something. And, and I'm not knocking technology, but we can become a parent and monitor 
how much we use these devices. So what is this going to help me with? Well, it will help me get some more content onto my blog. I've had to make some really healthy meals from scratch here with my wife coaching me from Chile over the phone. And I intend to put those up on my blog. And so if I start saying, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes a day on social media, and this is when I'm going to do it, and then I will not go there. And this way, it gives me more time to work on productive things in my life. By the way, we don't believe that keeping the commandments of God saves you. The fundamental beliefs of the Adventists are actually on Adventist.org. And oftentimes, other Christians will accuse us of trying to work our way to heaven. But that's not true. We believe that the law of Moses was nailed to the cross, that the Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God, and they're eternal. They were already in existence in the beginning right at creation, because when Cain killed Abel, God said to, to Cain, where is your brother? And his blood is, 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 is uh, God was aware that, that of Abel's blood was calling to the Lord, God. So what's important to know is, is that the Ten Commandments are just a reflection of God's character. If you don't put any other God before the almighty creator God that created what we're living in and the air we're breathing and the world that we're walking around in instead of the little G God that is out there. There is huge movements. It's just 2024. The other day, I was so sick from somebody that is just their, their little G God is a political party. And they were screaming that, you know, white uh, Christian conservatives that live out in the country, and that <laughs> describes me, they're all radicals and they're threatening democracy. And I'm not radical. I don't threaten democracy. I will say this, MAPA, not MAGA, but MAPA, make America Pray again, MAPA. And so, and MAPA can stand for a movement for Catholics and Protestants. <laughs> Amen? Because make America pray again. And, and I don't want to get into any politics here because I lose half of my audience if I did. Um, but I am not a threat to democracy. And so, uh, that's another thing. I need to limit how much time I spend listening to things. I do need to have a little bit of an awareness of what's going on in the world. If like, oh my God, Russia puts a nuclear missile into space. I need to be aware of that. And by the way, I've had friends in business from Russia for double decades. Now, I could probably get censored in, in saying that I'm a, um, what do you call it, a, a sympathizer for Russia, but they're people just like us. I've been to Eastern European countries, my friend, five times I've been trips over there. And the churches are packed because people are standing room only because they need to hear the hope of Jesus Christ died for your sins and he's coming back. And if you believe in him, you'll be born again and your life will radically change. And so I want to go ahead and just close with prayer. You know, I quit. I quit trying to be all things to all people. I quit, uh, you know, worrying if somebody, if I don't answer their question on a business question, that they're going to run off and, and buy from somebody else because you know, what I do uh, is a competitive field. But I know that if I pay my tithe and I pay my offerings, 
in Malachi, it tells me, test the Lord. He'll, he'll open up heaven and throw in, in so much abundance into your uh, life that you won't be able to, you know, store it all. Test the Lord. He is good. And so that's my experience. I mean, we've had difficult times and, and it's not always easy, but I, my life is real today. I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do today. And I'm doing my best to share Jesus Christ with others. And so I quit. I'm not going to be buried under Satan's yoke again. I'm going to make progress on this. And guess what? I don't have to be perfect. But if I keep at it, and, and then my wife is going to be happier, I'll get more content up onto my websites. This will, in turn, bless more people. And then when I am doing things that bless other people, the Lord naturally takes care of everything that I need because he wants to keep a good thing in progress. So, Lord, I just want to close with prayer. Thank you, Father, that you encouraged me. I remember the first time I started doing this, I was so nervous and you made it easy for me. You just convicted me to read the Bible every day for anywhere from 10 to 13, 14, sometimes the longer ones are 18 minutes long. So I read the Bible through during 2020 when we all got locked down. And Lord, I now am very comfortable just sharing my soul on, on the internet. And I just pray that I can help other people and I can help them maybe become parents over their phones and not have their phones in their bedroom so they can have like a place where they can go and they can read the Bible or they can read a, a book that will enrich their lives and add value to their lives. And Lord, I just pray that you'll cast this message out there and it will it'll make traction and improve other people's lives. Lord, thank you for saving my life. And I pray for your soon coming, Lord. And we know that when you return, all the people that are sleeping in their graves that know you as their personal savior, they will come up out of their graves and all of us that are believers, we will go to heaven with you. And we look forward to that day in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you till the next time, my friends. Bye for now.